Okay, so just have a look at uh, well, one of the defining features of the vesica, the flower of life, seed of life, is actually represented by this traditional drawing tool, the 30, 60, 90 degree set square. Now, for instance, okay, so I'm just going to, okay, what, what you have here, and I'll show you how it comes into drawing, but I'll just, uh, for instance, where does it? Okay, well, uh, okay, so I'll just use this to create a model of what I mean. So there you have your 30, 60, 90 degree set square. 90 degrees, 60 degrees, and 30 degrees. Now what happens is that if this length is one, then that, then the hypotenuse, or the, the longest edge would be two, which means that this edge has to be the square root of three. You can get that from Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We know what a and b, are, uh, a and c are, because that's, so we could say c squared uh, minus a squared equals b squared. We can, you know, we insert that, so what is c? c is so two squared minus one square, squared equals b squared, that's four. 4 minus 1 equals b squared, so 3 equals b squared, therefore b is the square root of 3. So we can work that out quite simply and you know, it's been one of the axioms that's been proven in the past. But how does this, and the square root of 3, is also has like the actual number itself is pretty cool, 1.73205. Zero eight dot 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 will carry on, but how how can we get that? Well, we can create one of these uh, in the vesica as applications to the pendulum because that's thirty degrees as well. But using a a vesica, we can draw that pretty easy, and you can and use that to prove that the vesica is. Uh, Incorporates the square root of three in there. So my shot, yep. Okay, so with a construction line, so we got all the points of the vesica. Now just two circles, the same size. Um, so now we know that this, that's the compass setting, and so therefore we know that that is of equal length, and that is of equal length. Therefore, we know uh, this is also in Euclid's book one, prop one, how to create an equilateral triangle. We know that this is an equilateral triangle. Now, since all sides are equal, I'm like going to call each side two, just to simplify it. So two, two, two. Therefore, all angles have to be equal, 180 degrees in each triangle, which means that it's 60 degrees. So if you draw a line down the middle, you have a 30 60, 90 degree set square. And we've already shown, so if this unit is, the compass setting is at two, therefore, because we've cut it in half, that has to be one. Therefore, this line has to be the square root of three. And since this is just a smaller version of that, that means that, that, in fact, we could, now we're gonna call this one, the compass setting, we call that one now. And therefore, the width of the mandala or the, the womb or the, the, uh, the almond um, has to be a square root of three. So that defines uh, the vesica, but this proportion uh, actually goes on to show the, the, I suppose the fract fractal growth of it, because one of the things about the vesica uh, it it's uh, just like a, well it grows into the hexagon and what you have is a series of stackable shapes and so I'm going to start with a vesica And the square root of three is is it defines the rate of growth of the vesica into the trinity, then into the 
uh, seed of life and therefore into the flower of life as you move up and it's a nice little uh, thing going on in there okay so begin with the vesica already established that if the equilateral triangle formed by here okay we've already shown the square root of three how that uh, is basically you know, cutting it down the middle there that's the ratio that's just you know, built into it so if it's one across so if this is one therefore this has to be the square root of three one point square root of three one point seven three two zero five on and on so that has to be the square root of three now vesica equilateral triangle well there's also another equal equilateral triangle in there and that's here or we could do the rhombus so you could do another triangle you got a rhombus or you could do it the same on the bigger scale and this is one of the power the powerful things of the vesica leading to the seed of life is that you just it's just a series it circles but each circle just leads to a, a greater series of equilateral triangles now because we already know that edge length is the square root of three. Therefore, we know that this equal that this smaller triangle here, if that edge length is one, if the smaller is the edge edge length of one, now we have a larger equilateral triangle where the edge length is the square root of three. Now next we have the trinity, so I've kept my compass at the same setting and this is a natural way that the vesica grows and with applications to beehives for instance and one of the reasons why hexagons are so important because they're all they're stackable and they're stackable because a hexagon is just six equilateral triangles but now we have the trinity and uh, Now with that we can use those same lines. Look okay, we one there. One there, we can extend this one. Okay, so now we have another equilateral triangle. I'll just change the color to and with that I mean we have that point here, here and here. Now the, the triangle has grown again. And here's the intro. Now I've tested it on GeoGebra, so I'm quite sure about this. If that is one, because we've also shown that then that equilateral triangle, the edge length is the square root of three. Well, this triangle, the length, so we, if that's one, so what's that length? 2.73205.08 or the square root of 3 plus 1. Now we'll be able to fit this into shot. Okay, so now Vesica to Trinity and we're still at the same setting and now we can do the seed of all. Right now we just keep going around and now we have a so now this will be the central point and now we we have seven circles six one on the inside six on the outside now we have the seed of life and so our first equilateral triangle is one edge length then our second was square root of three and then the next equilateral triangle was the square root of three plus one. And now we have, uh, I'll need to extend this line. Not quite, no, I don't. Uh, so 
where would it be the best to put? Okay, well, I'm gonna imagine this dot here, here and here. So we just skip around. Now that, now just to, okay, that would be 70, just to make sure that's the right one. Yep. Okay, so now we have another equilateral triangle. Uh, the first one on the inside. Then we have our second. Uh, it's not showing up too well. And then we have our third. And now we have a fourth. Well, now you can sort of see these pedals here. Well, that's actually the, so for instance, you see that pedal? Well, that's actually the same pedal that now defines our first equilateral triangle. So we know if that is one, then therefore these pedals are one. And this is one, two, three. Okay, I'll just draw in those. So now this next equilateral triangle is, has an edge length for three which means it's this triangle times by itself, the square root of three times the square root of three is three. One, two, three. So what you have is this, uh, is, uh, is also the term tessellation, I, uh, slip in my mind now it's time for bed but it's actually the square root of three then the square root of three plus one and then the square root of three squared and now if you were to continue this into the uh, fruit of life and then to the sorry the flower of life and then to the fruit of life all it is is a series of equilateral triangles and they keep growing and expanding and it's the square root of three which is the important part in there and that's why this instrument here, not only has it 30 degrees to give you that lovely pendulum angle, it's also got all the lovely numbers in there as well, whether you get the degrees, minutes and seconds, and the proportion of itself, two, one, square root of three. That's it, square root of three. That's the rate at which things uh, grow in this form of geometry.